Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. Let's go out to the grape arbor. We're going to harvest some grapes and then we're going to be making a very old-fashioned grape jelly recipe that was handed down through the generations. Most of the grapes that we harvest are for juice, which you'll be seeing in videos. So let's take a closer look. So here's some of the grapes that we're going to harvest. These are Concord grapes and we have a long property line of them. Just to show you how many we have, I'll tilt my camera this way. And here you go. Hundreds and hundreds of grapes. All right, so the first thing we need to do is fill this part of the juicer with water. Now it's going to take about an hour to extract all the juice from these grapes. We only need four cups of juice to make grape juice. We only need four cups of juice to make jelly. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put the grape. Okay, everyone, I have the kitchen all set up. We are extracting the juice over there at the stove. That is my propane stove. The oven is open the door because we are setting a jar right here, which I'll show you in a minute. So we have our half gallon jars, which go on the stove, on the oven door. The juice is going to extract into there. We are doing a very old traditional recipe. This is very old. So this is not USDA regulated. Now I do follow USDA sometimes and sometimes I don't. So the explanation for me is I follow the USDA when it comes to low acid foods. I always pressure can them. When it's high acid foods, I do not follow the USDA because at one time this actually was approved method, but they changed it through the years. And this is jam and jelly. We are going to be using the paraffin wax and the jam pot covers. Now these I had to buy overseas. I had to buy these from the Netherlands because I couldn't find any here in the United States, but we are actually going to be doing something extremely old fashioned. Now, this part of my videos, you've seen me do this before, but you've never seen me do this because we are soaking this in some alcohol. And you'll see that here in just a moment. So first thing we have to do is extract the juice from the grapes. Now, when we do that, we don't add any sugar. When you make grape jelly, you do not add the sugar when you add the juice. You can buy juice from the grocery store as long as it's unsweetened. So that's really important that you want it to be unsweetened because to make it gel, you have to add your sugar to the pectin. Okay, so there's nothing really I can do yet. Everything's prepared, but these are old jam and jelly jars. Now, these do not have any canning lids on them because we don't use canning lids. We're not really canning it. It's called open kettle, but we are going to soak the covers and some alcohol and we're going to use the paraffin wax and it is going to be an interesting project for all of you to watch because I've done this a long time except for adding the alcohol which you'll see that in a moment. It's the grape juice we have already. It's really really hot. It comes out scalding hot and we are going to see if I have five cups. I'm going to be using sure gel and I'm going to be using the directions on the box but you can make this without using any kind of pectin. All right, I'm gonna mix this all up because it's basically following the directions on the box. And then when it's done, we're gonna put it in the jars and then we'll go with the second stage. And that is the interesting way of preserving food without canning it. Go ahead and prepare all of our jars. Now, grape juice stains everything. So I have an old cloth here. That way it won't matter if it gets spilt. So we're gonna go with these jars first because that's how I can show you how to use the paraffin. We're gonna actually use paraffin on these too. 
Now, I'm not sure how much it's gonna give me, so we're just gonna go with these jars first. Ready. Now we're going to go ahead and melt the wax. You can add the wax at any time. The wax will always come to the top. So even if your jelly is really hot, it does not matter when you pour the wax on, it will always rise to the surface. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to pour the wax on top. Now it's hard to show on camera, but the wax stays on top and I can see when the wax is totally around the jar. So I'm gonna do this to all of them. When you wanna eat your jam, when you wanna eat your jelly, all you do is take a knife, hook a hole, and the wax will come right back out. You can reuse the wax over and over again if you wish. Through the years, people have asked me if I could use beeswax instead of paraffin wax. I really don't know the answer to that. I've never used beeswax. I don't know why you couldn't because beeswax is food grade, but I have never tried it. If somebody did try it, why don't you let me know in the comments below so other people have that answer. Can you use beeswax instead of paraffin wax? I have no clue. Looks like it's all done except for we're going to add another step of precaution and we're going to use a very old vintage way of helping to preserve our food. So this is preserved. In other words, there's no air going to get in here. But every once in a while, you can have sometimes the paraffin wax, maybe have a nick in it or something like that. And this is going to help us to preserve it for that extra barrier of protection. So let me show you what we're going to do with this. We are going to open this up and pour it in this bowl. Now we don't need a whole lot of it. That is plenty. And we'll go ahead and we are going to take our wax disc. We're going to soak it in here just like this. We're going to put that on top. And we're going to have this on top of that, like that. First, we're going to go like this. So we're going to take this, and it's going to go like this. Then this is to keep the dust out of the lids. Now that is perfectly sealed and ready to last for years. So we're going to go ahead and do this again. Take our piece of wax that came with the kit. We're going to put our lid on it. Now I'm going to go ahead and do that for all of these here that have the lid. And then when I'm done with this, I'll show you what we do with the ones that don't have the lid. everything is done we can put them on our shelves and this will last many years but for me about two years I try to get everything consumed by then so we'll go ahead and put them on my tray to take it into my pantry so 
So you can use this method for any jams or jellies or syrups. So any kind of fruit syrup. And there you go, everyone. Go ahead and take this in the pantry. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the old fashioned ways of preserving food without using your canner. Take care everyone, and we'll see you guys again tomorrow. Bye.